Hi, welcome to Security. I'm your host, Solim Bharatiya, and my next guest is once again Archis Gore, CTO of Polyverse. And today we are going to talk about this growing risk, growing threat of ransomware in modern IT infrastructure, especially in the cloud native world. Archis, before we start our discussion, I would love for you to give us a quick overview of what exactly are ransomware. Um, first of all, thanks for having me on this. It's always a pleasure. Um, so, so what is what is specifically ransomware? Uh, you know, as the name implies, it is any software that holds a business function at ransom. Now, that might be many different things, right? It might lock you out of your system. It might do a host of a host of activities that actually are critical and crucial for your day-to-day -day operations to succeed. And um, and so, an attacker or any any malware or system or, or attack exploit that will um, make it unusable and force you to pay a ransom usually through um, you know usually through bitcoin but it could be any number of ways um, to in exchange for releasing that system or or enabling functionality and then getting more concrete uh, tr what what we colloquially know as ransomware is typically something that encrypts all of your code and uh, all of your data on disk or in a database and then um, asks you for a ransom before it will decrypt it. As compared to other threats, ransomware are kind of scary because if your application is compromised, you can always you know, restate it. But if the data is held hostage, everything comes to a standstill. Uh, you can hold uh, an organization to its knees. So can you talk about what makes ransomware even more dangerous than any other bug exploits. So it, it's almost ironic, um, you know. So if you if you think of, and, and that's specifically why I focused on business continuity as opposed to you know the the actual features of ransomware, right? Um, if if you think of data loss, right? Data loss is really bad and catastrophic, and you know people's um, data goes out and a bunch of things happen, but the the company stays operational, right? The business stays operational, and so. If you're operational, you can go remedy it. You know, you have time on your side to go and let's say, um, you know, prosecute the attackers or make it right with your customers, um, you know, pay out fines. A fine will always be easier than, than when your business doesn't function. And so what makes ransomware absolutely, absolutely dangerous is um, let's take a hospital scenario, right? Uh, let's say there's a there's a system that steals your customers' uh, insulin records, right? How much insulin do you get every day? It's bad, right? It's not it's not great to have that happen, but you continue to get your insulin. Um, imagine if that insulin pump was held for ransom, right? Or a dialysis pump was held for ransom. Now you have a person that could potentially die, right? There would be people waiting. There would be a backlog, right? So that's what makes ransomware so absolutely critical and more dangerous than even data loss or remote code execution at times. Um, although, yeah, and, and so, you know, like even though we intuitively don't think of it that way, that's why um, people are more scared of ransomware. That's why we react more harshly to ransomware is it? it's front and center. It it literally hoards you at ransom. If you look at ransomware, it kind of come from the legacy, the traditional word. Uh, but, you know, and you gave some good examples of things like insulin pumps. But we are moving towards uh, a word of Tesla's uh, where, you know, it's more or less like an IoT or supercomputer on wheels. And as uh, we are getting surrounded by all these IoT devices, uh, the threats are something that we did not even envision. We don't even know how these devices will be exploited. So can you talk about some of the risks of ransomware from modern perspective that we should take it seriously? Um, yeah, so, so you know, I mean, uh, it, it, it extends, right? Any, any device that is electronic, which now includes almost every device, including pacemakers, um, you know, including airplanes, you know, uh, all modern airplanes are fly-by-wire at this point. Um, you know, the, the SpaceX capsules are now entirely touchscreen, right? Um, and so in, in this new world, the, the problem is think of any functionality that you need to do at a critical time and is time sensitive. And so always focus on that word time sensitive. Um, 
and ransomware will absolutely disrupt that, right? If if a if a rocket needs to fire at a specific time to inject into lunar orbit or get out of lunar orbit, or n number of other things, um, that's that's where ransomware starts to be far more dangerous, right? Now, then there's the more mundane stuff around the house, like you know your dishwasher doesn't work or your you know light bulbs are on all day, your heating is too high or too low, um, but but we have we now rely, so technology in legacy, right, was a convenience. Technology today is um, is literal survival, right? It's a, it's a life support system. And that's what makes it um, far more dangerous. And so when you think of cars, right, whether, you know, a car might hit someone unless you pay a ransom, a car might not move unless you pay a ransom, which which is kind of less than, you know, less severe than, than going and hitting someone or doing something dangerous. Um, and, and, you know, we, we could go on and on about like how, you know, bigger and more threatening scenarios, but I think I, I think we all intuitively can take a look around our lives. I could literally look around this room that I'm sitting in and I can imagine about five things in this room that if they were held for an ransom, my life would be very materially impacted. So the bottom line is the more connected devices are entering our lives, the more vulnerable we are to these attackers. Uh, now, we have talked about the problem area a lot. Let's talk about the solution side of it. But before we talk about solution, I also want to know how much awareness is there about ransomware in the customers? Uh, where is it in their uh, radar? Are they really concerned and prepared for it? Yeah, so believe it or not, um... And I hate to say this, uh, but you know it is it is actually the number one. In fact, um, there is absolutely nothing above ransomware. And um, I mean, every customer we talk to, we get we get asked, you know, do you have something for ransomware? What do you do about ransomware? Um, it, it is it is very front and center. And and you know, just you only have to go back to WannaCry to remember that all of almost all of UK healthcare just shut down for three days. Um, you know. And again, very big difference from just literally run the two headlines in your head, which is one is um, all of UK healthcare data was leaked. And yeah, you know what, it's bad, but we're, we're in a way we're getting used to data leaks. I don't wanna say that it's the new normal, right? I don't want it to be the new normal, but we've survived data leaks. And so, yeah, like all of your data was leaked, but hey, you continue to get treatment versus uh, you just could not go to a hospital for two days. Think about all the ER. Think about all the you know emergencies, poison control, all of those things that just you know people just have to wait um, in line. Um, and so that that fear is now very much front and center um, in people's minds. Um, and, and so this is this is by far at least sociologically. So. I don't know whether, you know, like if, if you had to do like a mathematical projection of risk, I don't know if ransomware is at the top, but when I talk to a human being, when I talk to customers, um, that is by far the top. You gave some very good examples of, you know, the UK healthcare. And yes, there are serious threats. Also, because of the nature of ransomware, the attack surface is also massive. It can go all the way from your desktop to your servers. So can you also talk about what unique challenges do ransomware pose as compared to other exploits and threats? So uh, for once today, you know, I am I am actually not going to talk about any Polyverse products. Uh, you know, there's nothing that we do for this except for um, I have a lot of good ideas and I have a lot of um, sort of recommendations that we ourselves implement. And so this is more of a sharing how we think about it, sharing how we tell our customers to, to think about the solutions to this problem. And if there's one thing you know about Polyverse, it's um, it's that we wake up every day and we ask ourselves one simple question, which is assume the bug, right? Assume that this is going to happen or it has already happened. Um, what can you be doing right now such that on the day that it happens, it has no impact on you, right? And so we, we frame the question that way and then we, we look at answers. Now, if we think in terms of traditional cybersecurity, if we think if we if we try to take the tools that we have and adapt them to ransomware, we're always in this chasing game, right? You you have to learn signatures to the ransomware, you have to create firewall rules to prevent it from getting in, right? And you'll you'll get the second one or the third one, even with the most perfect AI, you won't stop the first one. Um, 
you know, even if you were able to get there, right, you know, and, and more than often, it's it's a very long way. And, and then even after it happens, there is very little that we have in place to undo that or to recover from that, and uh, except for paying ransom. And if you actually look at, and the data justifies this, if you, if anyone goes to Google and looks at the amount of ransom paid year over year, it is actually uh, spiking exponentially. It is almost like a, a hockey stick uh, curve going upwards. So what do we at Polyverse do about this? And what do we tell our customers to do? And really the, the best answer that I have so far, and I, and you know, like we're working with our partners to um, to to build vertical solutions around this. Is on the day that the ransom happens, what can you have done yesterday that that protects you? And that is an incremental backup or a rollbackable file system like ZFS or ButterFS or you know any number of these that are out there. And honestly, that is that is my personal favorite solution. That is the only solution that I that I feel safe with and comfortable with. Because, um, because one of the things that it gives me is, is a very polyverse-like philosophy to security. I no longer care how the ransomware happened, right? And that's, and, and uh, long time um, you know, followers of me have known this. If you get into the how, you've already lost the game, right? Um, what you have to focus on is what is happening and how can you make that ineffective? By having incremental backups, by having file systems that let me roll back five minutes, one day, you know, one hour in time, what have you. Um, I just don't care, right? Did it come in through a firewall? Was it a browser? Was it an OS bug? Was it a Windows bug? Was it a Linux bug? Just doesn't matter, right? I just I just go there and I say, you know what? Just take me back five minutes. I'm done, right? Life moves on. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of the solution that I keep coming to. And I'm, you know, and if other viewers have other ideas that are, even better than that, or more systemically protective, I'm always um, willing to learn and educate uh, myself as well. But but that's where my head is at around ransomware solutions. So it looks more or less like, you know, as we always discuss, technology versus people. So it, it seems like the social aspect is strong as compared to the technology aspect when it comes to ransomware. Yeah, and, and I was just gonna say, um, you know, um, and and we are you know just to be just to be clear like we're we're working with a number of people we have some in house R and D projects going on gone about this um, but but if anyone wants to collaborate if if someone wants to drop an open source tool with us right um, we're always welcoming welcoming that interaction as well. Archie, thank you so much for once again taking time out today and talk about ransomware and I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>